In this video, I want to talk about the intuition behind the posterior sort of mean and variance which we derived in the last video. So in the last video, we derived that the posterior distribution of theta given our sample of data x is actually normally distributed with a mean which is given by theta primed, which is this sort of theta prime below, and a variance which is given by sigma primed theta or squared. So I'm going to start off with the posterior variance, sigma prime theta squared. And all I'm going to do to this is to take this sort of minus 1 over to the other side. And that's just equivalent to raising both sides to the power minus 1. If we do that, we then get that sigma prime theta squared to the power minus 1, which is the same thing as 1 over sigma theta primed or squared, is just equal to 1 over sigma theta squared plus n over sigma x squared. So what's the intuition behind this result? Well, if you talk about 1 over a variance, then you start to talk about something which is known as precision. And obviously you want precision to be as high as possible because you want the variance to be as low as possible. And what we have here is that the what we would call the posterior precision is a mix of two things. It's equal to the sum of the prior precision so how sure were we about our sort of prior estimates and what we call our sort of data precision. So this is the sort of data precision which comes from the fact that we've actually got a sample of observations. And what do we notice about this result? Well, if we decrease sigma theta squared, then that's equivalent to saying that we're more sure about our prior. So in that case, because we're decreasing sigma theta squared, the precision is going to increase. So let's just write that down. If sigma theta squared declines, then the precision increases. That makes sense because we're more sure about our prior estimates. Secondly, we note that as our sort of n increases, in other words, as our sample size increases, then that also leads to an increase in precision. And that makes sense intuitively as well, because if we have a larger sample, intuitively we would expect to be more precise about our sort of posterior estimates. And finally, if sigma x squared actually declines, in other words, our sort of likelihood has a sort of lower innate variance, then similarly that also leads to an increase in precision. Okay, so that's the sort of intuition behind the variance, the sort of posterior variance. What about the posterior mean, which I've called here theta prime? Well, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to replace this sigma prime theta squared by that above here. If we do that, then that's just equivalent to taking this expression here. So theta zero over sigma theta squared plus n x bar over sigma x squared and dividing that through by this term inside the parenthesis above, because this is all the sort of sigma prime theta squared to the power minus one. So that's just one over sigma theta squared plus n over sigma x squared. Now what we're gonna do is for both top and bottom, we're gonna combine the corresponding fractions. So if I do that for the top, then we get theta zero times sigma x squared plus n x bar times sigma theta squared all divided through by sigma theta squared times sigma x squared. Divided through on the bottom, now what we're going to have is sigma x squared plus n times sigma theta squared, all divided through on the bottom by the same thing, sigma theta squared times sigma x squared. Then what we notice is that both of these denominators are going to cancel with one another, so that's going to help us to simplify the thing quite a lot, and we're just going to be left with theta zero times sigma x squared plus n x bar times sigma theta squared, all divided through on the bottom by sigma x squared plus n sigma theta squared. Then what we do is we just separate this thing out into its two fractions, so just taking this part as one fraction and this part as another fraction. If we do that, we get that this is equal to the prior mean, which is called theta zero, times sigma x squared divided through by sigma x squared plus n times sigma theta squared. Then we just need to add on to that plus x bar. And then finally, all we've got is n times sigma theta squared divided through by sigma x squared plus n times sigma theta squared. 
So what we've got here is, again, we've got a term which depends on the sort of prior parameter, the prior mean, and we've got another term which depends on the sort of maximum likelihood estimate of the theta in this case. And what's the intuition behind this result? Because we've got these sort of prior and the likelihood estimates of these parameters, and we've also got these terms which just correspond to weights. So what happens to these terms as we change the weights? Well, let's start off as we did before with sigma theta squared. What happens if sigma theta squared declines? In other words, we are more sure about our prior estimates of the parameters. Well, in this first term here, if sigma theta squared declines, then that's going to cause a decrease in this denominator, which is going to cause an increase in the weighting towards the prior. And it's going to have exactly the opposite effect on this second term here, because it appears in both the denominator and in the numerator. So if sigma theta squared actually decreases, in other words, we're more sure about our prior estimates, then that sort of causes a weighting towards our previous estimate, our prior estimate of the parameter, which we call theta zero. And that makes intuitive sense, because if we're more sure about our prior estimate, then we want to give that a higher weighting relative to the likelihood. So what happens then if we increase our sample size? If we increase our sample size, then we can see from this first term, then that's going to cause an increase in this denominator, which is going to cause a decrease in this first weighting term. So we're going to have a decreased weighting towards the prior. Whereas in the second term here, if n increases, then because n is both on the top and on the bottom, this is also going to cause an increased weight towards the likelihood. So if n increases, then we're going to weigh less towards the prior and more towards the likelihood. So in the sort of first case, we weighted more towards the prior if sigma theta squared declined. Now we're weighting more towards the maximum likelihood estimate, which is x bar. Finally, what happens if sigma x squared actually declines? In other words, our sort of likelihood has a lower innate variance. Then we can see in this example, and that's going to cause a sort of decrease weighting towards the prior because sigma x squared is both on the top and on the bottom here. And on the second term here, if sigma x squared declines, then that's going to cause a decrease in the denominator, which is going to cause an increased weighting towards the likelihood. So again, we're going to weight more towards the likelihood. So what's the moral to take away from this? Well, the idea is that if we have more and more data, so if n increases, then the prime becomes less and less important.